Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. All right. I'll, I'll let you guys know. 25 minutes? Guys, see if we, if we, we're about to go for record. Hello, everyone. My name is Sierra Allen, and I'm going to be introducing Stefan Wagner. Before we hear from him, I'm going to give you a bit of background information on his movement. The vision of Stefan Wagner is entitled B Town. His vision began when he traveled to New Orleans during the wake of Hurricane Katrina with the mission to transform discarded Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras beads into inspirational artwork. He is a native of Germany as well as a self-taught artist. His goal is always to create artwork that raises awareness for the environment as well as global warming. The reason behind Stefan Wagner using Mardi Gras beads is to showcase a medium between the beauty of the once used beads as well as his style of illuminating his pieces from within. Bead Town Northwest Indiana Community Project is sponsored by Methodist Hospital Foundation. This project also includes one of Wagner's most noted pieces of work, which is in the Guinness Book of World, World Records. Wagner currently holds the record for the largest mosaic artwork to learn more about Stefan, ba Stefan Wagner and his complete body of work, visit his website at galleriaalegria.com. Thank you. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. My name is Alex Montanez, and I'm um, welcome. Thank you for joining us at WIUN Radio uh, speakers <laughs> today. Um, we, uh, today, I'm here with Stefan Wagner, the mastermind behind B Town, the visually stunning. Hello, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Happy Mardi Gras, everyone. Thank you. Um, I, I, how this B Town? What what brought you to think of this B Town to help Mardi Gras in New Orleans? Well, um, it took a little while. You know, first I moved down to New Orleans in two thousand six, um, more to help after the destruction of. Um, Hurricane Katrina, which devastated the region. And um, my background was uh, business development for a financial software company and marketing. And it becomes this little bit uh, meaningful afterwards because um, I moved down to New Orleans because when, when you work in marketing or in sales, you always see spreadsheets and sales goals. You never see the results of your, of your labor. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something that helps rebuild New Orleans. As a German, you know, I found, I found that the United States and the Allies did the same thing with Germany after the Second World War. And so I wanted to give back to the United States a little bit and help, you know, where help was needed and uh, help, you know, build something in New Orleans, something meaningful. So an outsider coming in ready to save us. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it like this, but it's more like, you know, it's life is about taking gifts sometimes, right? And uh, when... The United States, especially Chicago, where I lived for 16 years, has given me a lot. So it was just more like, now it's an opportunity for me to give back because I learned from, you know, in Germany, you know, we, you know, when my parents had to rebuild Germany and when you have to give back, you know, and I wanted just to give back to New Orleans. You know, a lot of people were displaced, over, you know, nearly 2,000 people died. And, um, and I knew I had the work ethic to, to make a difference. So I moved down there. Um, you know, when you when you switch your heads from a, from a marketing official for a financial software company to an assistant carpenter, you know, you don't make that much money as they used to be. So I could not <laughs> hang out as much, in, in, you know, in, in the night lifestyle in New Orleans. So I had to, you know, you know have too much energy on my hand, and, and I saw all these Mardi Gras beads hanging around, being thrown away, and and I learned through through my time there that nearly 10,000 tons of Mardi Gras beads are being discarded every year. And, and I felt like, yeah, okay, that's a problem, but Carnival in New Orleans, in Louisiana, is a very family-oriented uh, activity. It's not what you see. It's not just all about Bourbon Street or, you know, and partying wild. It's also very, very, you know, it's a tailgating. Family comes together all day long on parade routes and seeing these beautiful floats, you know, drive by. and. Uh, and so I thought, okay, you know, there's a misconception about Mardi Gras New Orleans and the rest of the world because everybody just thinks it's, uh, you know, beats for boobs and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, and 
Bergen Street, and there's a whole lot more to it. And so just to give the, the, the audience an, an idea is, you know, in Germany, they make political cartoons out of, you know, carnival um, and throw candy at these parades. In Rio de Janeiro, they, you know, we know all the costumes and the samba and the music and how much fun the people have there. Mardi Gras and Carnival is celebrated in Mexico, Quebec City, you know, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so, and I thought, okay, New Orleans, and knowing New Orleans, I think it deserves a whole lot more than just, you know, people talking about Bourbon Street. And so I wanted to showcase that misconception in images. And um, so I practiced with these Mardi, Mardi Gras beats at the beginning, you know, and, uh, you know, so that's the <laughs> When did it start? Like, what, how long did you do? First, I started off with um, a, a planter, you know, where you plant, put plants in. And I thought, well, they all look always terracotta style. You know, why not, you know, make them a little bit more colorful? So I used the beads. The beads are, um, you know, made in China mostly. They are coated with paint, and uh, they are on a, on a string where the bead is actually glued into the string, so to speak. So you. Some people who have done some of the art, they just use you know, an entire strand of beads and glued it on, onto a surface and made an artwork out of it. I did the same thing before I realized they look like crap, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is not the right way to do it. In order for me to take this, this subject matter serious as an artist or you know, as a developing one, um, I needed to find a way to make, to make these mosaics, which they actually are, to make them a little bit more, you know, uh, professional. And so I realized that I have to cut every single bead, um, you know, off the strand in order to pack the mosaics a little tighter. And um, that was my first aha moment, you know. And so I started then off, I said, oh, those pieces look better. And then I realized that as a mosaic artist, I am limited by the size of the beads. And so for me to show detail, such as a star or a fleur-de-lis or a gas light, I have to make big images. And so, so that was not a problem for me, you know, to, to think of larger images. But with that, it took more time. You know, you need to cut a whole lot more time. A beads, you need to, uh, you need, you spend so much more time on it. And so a four foot tall by six feet wide piece takes me about eight weeks to finish at that time. So uh, this Guinness World Record breaking mosaic, gorgeous piece that mm -hmm. is shown in the gallery today. Um, how many people, you, you wanted to make it more than just one person, you doing, you didn't want to be the center. What made you think like, I need, I need everyone. How many people, like, what mm -hmm. made you bring everyone, the community in? Well, um, I believe in the aspect that art always has to uh, give back and entertain, and I think that's every artist's goal. What I didn't realize is that I had developed a process to make art out of Mardi Gras beads, which was, um, the way I did it was a little bit different because I glued the beads onto the surface and not grouted them like a mosaic would be, a tile mosaic would be made. But then other teachers in the community wanted to learn my process and they asked me how to, if I would donate like a, a flower to the school. And I said, why would you want me to donate a piece to the school? Well, we want to train our students of how to make artworks out of Mardi Gras beads because we have so many of them. And I said, okay, why, if you want to make that commitment, why don't you let me teach your students and you work with me on an exhibit, a sub-exhibit, such as like maybe the food items of Louisiana, and then um, we can teach the children about Louisiana at the same time while we create art. And so that started the, the community outreach and the community process of creating uh, mosaics out of uh, Mardi Gras beads with the community. So that was in, in 2010. Now it's 2014 and we have nearly worked with 6,000 school children in schools to create mosaics out of Mardi Gras beads that are all part of the exhibit that we call Bead Town. And Bead Town has been traveling for a year and a half all, of, uh, all across Louisiana. And for the first time in December, we decided to bring it up to Northwest Indiana and the Methodist Hospitals Foundation, who's trying to uh, uh, establish carnival in this region, thought that this would be a good idea for Beat Town to come up here and tell the story. And so, as Beat Town has traveled, 
I reached out more and more to the community and to participating schools. And um, so far, over 10,000 people, old and young, have worked on creating these pieces together, including the, the artwork that you're referring to, the Guinness Book World Record that we established on December 4th in Natchitoches, Louisiana, which is in central Louisiana, that is the oldest city uh, in, in the Louisiana Purchase, and it's a 48 um, uh, you know, feet wide uh, artwork that is uh, a new Guinness Book of World Record. So it's not only just about art, creating art, it's about bringing everyone in and, and, and making a unifying, like, it's learning and, and uh, progressing. Mm -hmm. What has been a humbling experience is when you start off something and it's being well received and all of a sudden when it goes viral and people are loving it and, and, and they want to you know, be part of it. So this is what, what is an extremely humbling experience that all of a sudden now all the schools, um, you know, most of the schools in India want to want to do this part. And that is so well received that even in Northwest Indiana when we did some pieces together that we started with the um, Colonel Wheeler uh, uh, school in, in Crown Point, or the um, uh, the Emerson School in, uh, in in Miller, that all of a sudden, you know, kids learn that it doesn't have to be just Mardi Gras beads. The same process can be used to you know for fossils that we Im implemented mm -hmm. in the Guinness World Record, or nails, screws, or bottle caps. It's just the process of taking the time of trying to make a good image out of something. You know, out of uh, out of recycled materials, so so yeah, a lot of stuff gets thrown away, and I did not want to become like a like a tree hugger or a greenie, <laughs> because I do believe because sometimes they are like too much in your face, mm -hmm. and I still respect carnival and what 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 it represents, the family traditions. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, the community has created carnival and made it so popular that we generate so much trash. So I thought, okay. The community also has to be responsible for the excess of it, and I said, you know, in in a way, let's make something beautiful out of it without, you know, without judging, Ch yes, you know, without changing. or without changing. It's just it's just another part, another life form for these Mardi Gras beads that are being thrown. Beautiful. Uh, is there is there like anything you're going to be doing here? I mean, you are your gallery is here. Are you planning on doing maybe? You said that you. Got contacts and contacted some schools uh -huh. in Indiana. Is there anything else you might be wanting to do? Well, right now we have over 70 artworks here. Um, today was the last day at Mardi Gras for the exhibits in Crown Point and, and in Miller. And then we had eight satellite uh, locations where uh, we had pieces that promoted the exhibit B Town Northwest Indiana. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful that the Methodist Hospital. While I work with, uh, with students on this piece, excuse me, it, it teaches about history, what is the artwork what we are working on. Then we have, it teaches math, how many beats do we need, so we have to estimate it. For the frame, how much linear footage do we have, it's still all math questions, right? Children learn better when they are participating in something and are motivated to do this while, exe while executing an artwork. And so they learn without even actually preach to, without them knowing. It's because their interest in how many beats are in the artwork, you know, I teach them how, what the process is or the mathematic formula that they can arrive at it. Or even like geography, you know, when they work on a Louisiana map, for example, they see places they have not been, you know, oh, what's up there, you know, like, it's not, Louisiana is not just all about uh, New Orleans, you know, there's also, you know, the Franklin Parish up north, where there's a lot of cotton fields, you know, or Natchitoches, you know, the oldest city in the Louisiana Purchase. Not many people know that, but there's so much rich and culture there that, um, that needs to be promoted. And I think that made the Louisiana, Beat Town Louisiana, so incredibly successful right now that, that we, you know, we, we're going in schools, work with the kids of making dynamite images. 
So everywhere where we travel, we create pieces that represent the region. I was just about to ask that. Do, so, do they have meanings yeah, behind each yes, piece? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, and thanks for reminding me on this one. For example, for Valparaiso, we created, uh, we're in the process of doing the Orwell Redenbacher piece because of <laughs> yeah, Popcorn okay. Festival, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Crown Point has a beautiful, you know, courthouse, so we're doing that building. And, um, you know, in Miller, we did the Miller uh, Beach piece that you have seen mm -hmm. as a draft. So they will travel with Beat Town. Now it's always hard for people to fathom this. They're like, oh no, we want our piece to stay. And I said, for whom? Because you already know this beach, and if a tourist already is here and sees this, they don't need to. It has to travel in order to educate other people to might consider traveling to, the, to this region to learn about the courthouse, Valparaiso, the popcorn festival, or Miller Beach, or Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And so, because of that, I was um, introduced to uh, Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson and the school board of Indiana, uh, of Gary, Indiana. And uh, I met uh, the superintendent, Dr. Cheryl Pruitt. And um, we talked about this a little bit. And she says, well, what would you would like to do? And I said, well, I really would like to tackle an entire school district and see if we can do something for Gary, where children learn the greatness about Gary. You know, um, the music, the music man, um, the architecture, uh, the Jacksons, Miller Beach, the, the heritage area, the parks there. And it's a beautiful area. And I think if children know about something like this and help work on the Gary project with me, then um, they, that installs a little bit of pride in them that, you know, that they don't get so um, frustrated when they have to pass, you know, abandoned or build, burnt out buildings on the way to school, you know. So, you know, you've got you to muster up a lot of self-motivation mm -hmm. when you have three, walk, three blocks to walk to school and you're not really inspired and then by the time you're at school and you've seen so much... You want to give up. You you're just, just like, exactly. And I think an exhibit like this that is going to be paid attention to wherever it travels to, such as in um, you know, Louisiana, they will be interested about Gary just by the nature of what I'm going to do next with the beats, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I think regions like Chicago, Detroit, or other ones, they'll see you know, what art can truly do. And this has become art with a mission. Beads with a mission. That's it. Beads with a mission. <laughs> you, you understand? I, 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 you've been, you've lived in a hard life. You, you haven't had the, the, the privileges of. You understand Gary and then the hardships of it. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I grew up in a town in northern Germany. It's called Wilhelmshaven, and Wilhelmshaven was very huge during the Second World War. It's because it was a seaport where all the submarine launched during the Second World War. So after the war was lost, William uh, Germany was not allowed to build naval ships on, in the military anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, no employment. So William Safin is now all the way down to like 86,000 people mm -hmm. population, just like Gary. And um, because of the, the low income in that area, the city was, you know, coined, you know, nicknamed as Mud Town because it's on the coast. And every, every six hours the tide comes and the, you know, the water goes away and then you see a lot of mud that you can walk on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so I learned from it. My, my, you know, my mother got me when I was very young. Uh, when she was very young, she got me. And, uh, and so she was also a, a Section H you know, recipient. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I know the tough times of what some kids might face. And so for me, when I was in Chicago for... Um, 16 years, and it educated me, I felt like I could give back at the same time, and I remember Gary Indiana being always talked negatively about, and I want to change that. Beautiful. And this is an amazing, an amazing concept, and, and a beautiful project that I can't wait to, you know, I, I, I want to participate in it. It sounds not only fun, but mm -hmm. it sounds like it's for a good purpose, and it's meant for something to change the life change the light, bring it into mm -hmm. Gary. And is there any way anybody can contact you if they want to you know, give any information and talk to you about this one? Yeah, we're definitely um, re reaching out a whole lot more. We are starting to draft the plans right now. Um, we have a, 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 some, a semi-press conference in, in May when the AACP uh, conference, I think is, you know, 
nearby. And then in, in September, we make a full press conference when the pieces are painted that we are doing with Gary so that the mayor and people, important people, can put the first beat on it. So it will be in the news. But what is really amazing about this, so the Gary School Project, the, 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 the school board the, the, has uh, 16 schools in it, right? But we have secured 25 schools already. In, mm -hmm. in Munster, Hammond, East Chicago, Chesterton, um, Crown Point, Valparaiso, and uh, Michigan City. And so schools from that area will also participate, just one in each city, to, to lend their support for the Gary Project. It's because at one point, you know, we, this was all just one huge steel town community. So if somebody wants to um, get involved, they can shoot an email and send an email to 1914magazine at gmail.com, and then I will file their names um, in order to, before we get really, you know, going on it. But definitely, if you are in the region, look out for it. Well, thank you so much, Seth and Martin, for um, coming here at IUN and the WIU Radio Speaker Series. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you Happy so Mardi Gras. Have a great evening. Happy Mardi Gras to you, too. Thank you. Um, that's a very good question, uh, because the legacy, that part needs always to be addressed. For example, for the outlying schools, like in Hammond, Münster, etc., that legacy will be that I'm teaching the, a skill that they can apply for other art projects. Now, the infrastructure that we are implementing of working with the entire district, which the school board uh, voted anonymously seven to nothing yes for, which is a great accomplishment, everybody is behind the project, is that we want to do first work with the Gary Project and create the images that we want to create, but then the following year for the homecoming party in August, that the kids in the schools can maybe then build uh, floats for the homecoming party and use recycled materials for that, you know, based on whatever they would find. So there's just an ongoing an opportunity to, to show collaboration because this is the main thing. Gary or any city cannot just do it by themselves. You know, New Orleans and the southeast region of Louisiana had the luck that a Hurricane Katrina destroyed it, right? And the world was paying attention, you know? But when I walk around Gary, it looks so much similar like what I've experienced down there. Unfortunately, not a hurricane has visited Gary, Indiana. You see what I'm saying? But if it had, it would, get, it would have received the same national exposure for it, you know? And so, and I think that that, that a great community like Gary needs to have, you know, you know, have to have that kind of support and that kind of attention. And that's what we're going to hope we're going to create with, with the Gary project. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Next question. Well, since um, she pointed out that I came from a, an upbringing that was also a little bit rough, uh, I, can re I have a knack for relating to kids without preaching at them, I think. Uh, and I'm just saying that in a way we say, uh, what you ask is what you get in spite of nothing more frustrating for a kid knowing that they are meant for, for specialness or greatness or something inside of them and there's nobody who is, you know, is getting it out of them. And so that is what happens 
when you don't pay attention to them. You see what I'm saying? And with the Gary Project, with all these kids, and I have taught kids that have had some really rough times, you know, brothers being killed in gang violence, personally being shot eight times, people emptying bullets. It's very therapeutic, and it just establishes communication, you know, and you know, ideas, brainstorming. Brainstorming without being stifled, right? And so it is, now it's being, it's become more art with the mission, just as she correctly identified. And, uh, and this is just more like, now it's, now I mean, it's just more like something has, ho has gotten hold of me. It's not just art anymore. This is really something where we can make a difference, you know. Um, when people come in the gallery, we don't tell them, no, you cannot take pictures. No, you cannot touch the art. It's Mardi Gras beads, right? They're meant to be touched. They're meant to be taken pictures of, you know. You know, so that's, so this is like, I had it all in me, you know, all this time. I was just, you know, misguided, you know. But now we're catching up. Yeah. Yeah, right. you are portraying, like, some of your childhood, your upbringing, do you feel like that is in your art, like? No, it's not, because I'm pretty much over it, and that's okay, right? <laughs> and, and it's happy images. It's just, it took me a while, because I fell in love with New Orleans, and um, when people said after Hurricane Katrina that New Orleans is not worth to be rebuilt, that's what the people said about Germany after the Second World War, right? It's not worth to rebuild because the Germans have caused two war wars and they are troublemakers. But you're talking about, essentially, you're talking about a child's home, it doesn't matter, who's not responsible for it, right? And so that put it all in perspective for me, you see? And, uh, and so I'm like, I had to change something about it. It doesn't matter, you know? And also it's not centered about you, it's also about just the community. It's about bringing a, a message. Oh yeah, I think this is in general society has a big problem with this glorification of one person. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is about beat town, you know, this is about everybody pitching in about, you know, Veronica Sturman in Nakedish as an 11-year-old who inspired me to even consider other materials other than beads. So she introduced 46 million year old fossils to me, you know, and she didn't give up until I really put them on, I considered it, you know. Now we're gonna reuse rusted nails and bottle caps because they're still related, you know. This is, this is a steel town and there's pride in this, you know. We gotta get, you know, that's it, life goes on. You know, we're going to work with that. Okay, so now to close out, we're going to turn it over to Robert here. Well, thank you. Thank you to all those who contributed to this production. The IUN Office of Student Life Instructional Media Services, Stefan Wanger of Galleria Alegria in New Orleans, Louisiana, and the WIUN radio staff. Tune in to WIUN on April 22nd, 2014 for the next in the WIUN radio speaker series, The Walk for Water Project in Northwest Indiana and the world featuring IUN professor, Dr. Erin Page R. Gilan and her associates and their efforts. Upcoming guests in the WIUN speak radio speaker series are Interviews with Dr. Carlos Stevenson on strategic analysis and assessments for the United States Special Operations Command. And especially thank you to our audience at IUN's Bergwind Auditorium and for those of you tuning in to WIUN. This has been a WIUN radio production live interview on art and eco-justice in the urban setting with creator and founder of B-Town, world-renowned artist Stefan Wanger creating art from discarded Mardi Gras beads that would have gone otherwise to a landfill. Stefan shared with us his art and all of his information pertaining to how he recre recreates beads that have been discarded into art and helps galvanize a community through help in creating art and instilling in people in the community various traits such as stick to and helpfulness. Um, tune in from your tune in from your internet device to iun.edu forward slash wiun Indiana University Northwest what matters where